Well, I think uh, music can tell us a lot about memory, but maybe three of the big things uh, I would uh, describe as uh, the emotion, uh, the, big, the big head words would be emotion, uh, accuracy, and knowledge encoding. So the role that emotion plays in memories, uh, the accuracy of memories, and the way in which uh, knowledge can be encoded uh, into memory using music. So with respect to the first one, uh, We've had many, many uh, anecdotal accounts by now of people in old age homes or in the Alzheimer's unit of a hospital who have forgotten almost everything about their lives. They've forgotten their name, perhaps, the name of the spouse, what year it is, but they still remember music from when they were teenagers. You go in and you start playing the music that was around when they were 14 years old. They perk up, they'll sing along. Many, many hundreds of reports like these. And we all know that when that song comes on the radio that you haven't heard since high school, you're right there along with it. You're singing along. You remember all these nuances of it. And really what this is about, I don't think it's a special property of music other than that we really have an emotional reaction uh, to the music that we hear during that part of our life for a separate set of issues which I'll come to in a minute. But the idea uh, about memory, the big story of memory is revealed by musical memory, is that you tend to remember those things that you care about or that you have some deep emotional uh, connection with. It can be a positive emotion, it can be negative, but there appear to be neurochemical tags associated with memories that are highly emotional. And those are the ones that get most accurately recorded in your memory and the ones that are the most easy to draw out. Now you can ask, why memories from when I was 14? Why the music from then? and not some other time. Well, there are a number of possible explanations. Uh, one of them has to do with neurogenesis. Throughout the first 10 or 12 years of your life, the primary mission of the brain is to make as many new connections as possible. And starting around puberty, that mission of the brain shifts to pruning out the unneeded ones. And around this same time, you get this burst of pubertal growth hormone that makes everything going on seem really important. Uh, and so it's not just the music of that pubertal time that you remember, but you remember television shows and movies and the people in your, you can probably name better the people in your sixth grade classroom than the people in your first grade classroom or your college classroom. This was an important time for us. Around the age of 12, we begin to realize that we can have a, an identity that's separate from that of our parents. We come into uh, an understanding that we don't have to like what our parents like, we can choose the kinds of activities we want to partake in. We can decide what we want to dress like, what kind of food we want to have, what, what movies we like. And our social identity, to a large extent, is formed during that period of time. The people in my group listen to this kind of music. Those people listen to that kind of music. We'd never listen to that. That's for those kinds of kids. So your very identity as a social entity is, is being formed. That's why it's emotional. Now, the second two are a lot quicker to explain. Uh, the emotion was one, the other one is accuracy. What we've learned from musical memory uh, uh, is that memory is, is astonishingly accurate. People can remember details and nuances of the songs they know to uh, such a degree that you can play them a hundred millisecond burst of a piece of music they know and they can name it from that. Before, I'm talking about a tenth of a second, before the melody has a chance to evolve, before there's any rhythm, an experiment that Glenn Schellenberg did showed this, and there have been a number of other demonstrations. Just these quick little sound bursts, and people can name the song. If you alter a little piece of a, a well-known piece of music, people pick it up instantly. If I were to ask you to sing your favorite pop song, the likelihood is that you would sing it, even if you're not a professional singer, that you would sing it at very near the right tempo and in very near the right key, all the right pitches. It's, it's the nature of uh, memory in general, and musical memory in particular, that it has this accuracy. The third thing I mentioned um, had to do with knowledge representation. Uh, there's something special about music which allows us to encode information. For tens of thousands of years before humans had writing, they still had important information they needed to preserve, to pass on to their children, to share with their living groups, and for the most part, this information from what we know of studies of contemporary pre-literate societies around the globe, what anthropology has taught us, most of this important information is encapsulated in song. I'm talking about important survival information like which plants are poisonous and which aren't, how you treat a wound so that it won't become infected, 
uh, you know, don't drink from that well over there, so-and-so's uncle did, and the neighboring tribe killed him because they're very protective about that well. Uh, this kind of information, ancient um, human ancestors of ours discovered that if they set the words to music, it was more easy to remember. The internal constraints of the music, the meter, the accent structure, not to mention when you start using poetic elements like alliteration and rhyme, constrain the possible words that will fit. You've probably all had the experience where you try to remember a, a song and maybe you forget a word or two, but there aren't that many that could go there. I mean, it's got to be a certain number of syllables, it has to fit. The, this is the reason why uh, so much of human history uh, was encapsulated in song. The entire Old Testament, as you probably know, was passed down in song before it was ever written down. And today we see vestiges of this. Almost every child learns the alphabet through a song. We learn the body parts. You put your right foot in, you put your right foot out, you shake it all about, you do the hokey pokey. That, Carl, is what it's all about. <laughs> <laughs>